Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's do this, let's do that. You need to concentrate. This is gonna be a serious video. Okay, okay. What we're discussing in this video is how to incorporate truth in your film. You'll hear this all the time. Oh, that was a really good movie. It had so much truth to it. Or that movie sucked, it lacked truth. That's what it's all about, people. Truth. We need truth in our films. How do we do that? Let's talk about it. Let's think about this. Why is your favorite film your favorite? Probably because it made a connection to you, the audience. It was relatable. What was it about? Well, it was probably about a main character who was imperfect, set out on a goal to improve their life, but on the way there had to confront a bunch of obstacles. And Bruce Almighty, Bruce, played by Jim Carrey, blames God for his crummy life. And then what does God do? He just comes back and he says, here, take my powers. I challenge you to do a better job. In Disney's Pixar, Bob Parr, AKA Mr. Incredible, a retired superhero has to come out of retirement and save the world from total destruction. In The Terminator 2, uh, the Terminator, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, has to ensure the survival of John Connor. Meanwhile, the T-1000 continually tries to assassinate John. Now the thing is, these movies are unrelatable. Completely unrelatable. Who can relate to a superhero or God's powers or a Terminator from the future? It's not relatable at all. However, these movies did make a connection with their audience. How? The way this happens is every time the main character confronts an obstacle, they're actually confronting a deeper psychological issue, uh, a truth. And it's this truth that the audience relates to. And this psychological issue or truth is really what the movie is about at its core. So a film in its most basic form, if you can imagine, is either a character accepting a set forward truth or rejecting it. And that's it. Everything else is just gravy. Gravy on french fries with cheese curds. Mm. Typically a film without a consistent set forward truth is gonna be a bad film. And audiences typically have a hard time relating to it and connecting to it. So don't let that be you, have truth in your film. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to structure your truth premise. And then we're gonna talk about how to incorporate it into your film slash script slash you're awesome. Have you been working out lately? No? That's too bad, you're looking sexual. So these steps that we're gonna take, you can pretty much incorporate them at any point of your writing process and it'll probably make your short film or story way better, I'm hoping. Don't quote me on that. How to structure your truth premise? Well, the first thing you have to do is decide what is your controlling virtue. Now, a virtue is an admirable quality. It's a good quality in a person. Some virtues are friendship, sacrifice, generosity, love. I recommend that you pick a controlling virtue that you're passionate about because it'll come out positively in your writing. The next thing we have to do is decide what your controlling vice is. Now, a vice is essentially an evil quality. Okay, now the vice that you end up picking has to counteract or be the counterpart of the virtue that you picked. So for example, if you picked generosity, the counterpart vice would be greed, love, hate, friendship, betrayal, whatever, etc., etc., etc. The next thing we have to do is set up the truth premise paradigm. Paradigm, there's your college. Okay, so the generic structure for the truth premise is vice leads to defeat, but virtue leads to success. So let's incorporate some of the examples that we did before. So let's say betrayal leads to defeat, but friendship leads to success. So you can see that the truth premise is extremely general, um, and that allows the audience to interact with it, relate to it, connect to it. Even if they're not fully aware of it themselves, they're understanding what the film is truly about in a deeper sense. Okay, so that's the truth premise, fine. That's fantastic, that sounds so smart. It sounds smart, but it don't mean squat unless you incorporate it into your film. So how in the heck do you incorporate it into the film? Well, let's think about this. All main characters have physical goals, but before those physical goals can be achieved, psychological goals need to be achieved. Now, regardless of all the different physical goals of the characters, all their psychological goals need to be about the same thing, which is the truth premise that you've set out, what the film is about. 
And now you can sort of start to see that this truth premise that you've set out essentially dictates the success or fail of all the main characters. So how does this incorporate to characters? Well, each character has something called a dramatic arc. And a dramatic arc, you might have read about it or seen it before, and it's kind of confusing, but the easiest way to think of it is a dramatic arc of a character is how the character's behavior changes as the film progresses. So for example, good behavior transitioning into bad behavior or vice versa, or whatever degree of change you want in between of those. Now, what you need to do is ensure that all external change or behavior in this case is motivated by internal change. So essentially what we're saying here is that the inward change of a character is what directs the outward change. The psychological is what directs the physical. So you can imagine the story as a whole and paralleling the change of a character, their behavior or their dramatic arc, there is a deeper arc, a psychological arc. So everything about your character needs to be influenced by this psychological arc. Either they're gonna work towards a virtue, a feel-good movie, or slip backwards towards a vice, which is a bad feel movie. And in either case, your character needs to experience the corresponding consequences you've set out in the truth premise. And this is the psychological arc. Okay, so this is all confusing and fancy words. What? I'm confused. Let's do an example. So for example, let's talk about a good guy psychological arc. A good guy's psychological arc, in the beginning of the film, what they're gonna do is they're gonna practice a vice. And that vice is gonna lead to defeat. In the middle of the film, that character is gonna be given a choice between vice or virtue. And they're gonna pick virtue because they're a good guy. And then for the second half of the film, they're gonna start practicing this virtue and start to experience success. So for example, Bruce Almighty. His truth premise might be expecting a miracle leads to frustration, but being the miracle leads to peace. At the very beginning of the film, Bruce is whiny, complaining, all this kind of stuff, right? He's expecting others to sort of make his life better. So he's experiencing defeat because he's expecting a miracle. Halfway through the film, he starts to decide to help other people. He starts being the miracle. So he starts experiencing success. He starts helping other people and he even ends up getting his girlfriend back, which he lost. This is a feel good movie. Disney's Pixar The Incredibles. Um, the truth premise for that movie could be battling alone leads to defeat but battling as a family leads to success. So at the beginning of the movie, Mr. Incredible wants to go alone. He's Mr. Tough Guy and he takes on evil by himself and he gets worked over. He just, no success whatsoever. And then later in the movie, he starts fighting alongside his family. And that's when they start to kick some serious butt. He starts to experience success. So this is all fine and dandy. However, also in your film, you have a bad guy. We need to talk about a bad guy's psychological arc. It's just tweaked a little bit from a good guy. The psychological arc is based on the truth premise and the bad guy's truth premise is gonna be this. Distorted virtue leads to distorted success, but vice leads to defeat. At the beginning of the movie, the bad guy is gonna practice a distorted virtue and experience distorted success. Halfway through the movie, the bad guy will be given a choice between virtue or vice. They're a bad guy, so they pick vice. And then for the second half of the movie, they practice this vice and start to experience more and more defeat or fail. So let's do an example. Let's say the Little Mermaid. The bad guy from the Little Mermaid was Ursula, the octopus lady. So her truth premise might be manipulation leads to disordered success, but greed leads to death. So at the beginning of the movie, Ursula has everyone around her manipulated and she's starting to actually experience some distorted success. Eventually she ends up manipulating Ariel, the little mermaid, and then her dad comes in and whatever, she, Ursula ends up being the ruler of the seas. So she has sort of distorted success, but then she gets into the vice experience and defeat. So the whole greed leads to death. She gets extremely greedy with her power. She quite literally becomes huge and then she ends up dying in the process. A truth premise is essential. And the truth premise doesn't need to be obvious to the audience or even the characters themselves but the presence of it will give your film a deeper meaning. It'll make it relatable. So what I recommend is go back and rewatch your favorite movies and try to notice the truth premise that they've set out and how the characters develop alongside with that truth premise. And the next thing you need to do, regardless of a 60 second film or a 30 minute film that you're making, try to incorporate a truth premise and it'll make it that much better, I hope. 
I promise. I don't promise. I don't think we're done. How do we wrap? Are we done? Do we just stop? I don't know. Hey, guy, you watching, don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up this video. Like it. Like the video.